Hey guys, it's Adriana here from EduLab. I'm your resident SEO expert, and today we're gonna talk about keyword research. We're gonna show you how to do keyword research for your product pages so that you can show up on Google search results and rank higher. And this is great for driving organic traffic to your website. That's natural traffic that just comes when people are searching for terms related to your industry or niche. So definitely stay tuned if you wanna learn about how to use keywords, how to find keywords on your product pages to rank higher on Google search results. All right guys, so the first thing we want to talk about are what are keywords? Now keywords are search phrases that people enter on Google when they want to buy something. So an example of this is, you know, best jeans for petite women. That's a keyword. It can be a phrase or it can be a single word like just jeans. Jeans is a keyword as well. So keywords are phrases that people type into Google or words or terms when they want to buy something or find out more information. Your goal is to figure out what these keywords are, what these phrases and terms are that people are entering into Google so that you can use them on your product page. Now, when you use these keywords on your product page, this is called targeting a keyword. Well, Google is more likely to show you in search results, which can lead to more traffic and sales. So it's really important that you implement this methodology onto your website because it can definitely help with ranking. So if Google does show you on Google search results for a keyword that you're targeting, this is called ranking for a keyword because Google's matching what someone typed into Google and then sent them to your website, then you ranked for that keyword that someone was searching for. Now ranking for a keyword is pretty difficult most of the time, I'm not gonna lie. It's not the easiest thing you can do, but it's definitely something worth pursuing and with the right keyword research, you can do this a lot easier than if you were to just guess at what to name your product without doing the grunt work of seeing what the data actually says. So you wanna follow what the data says because you wanna make sure that you're targeting keywords that people are actually searching for. Okay, so there are three steps to keyword research and we're gonna go over them right now. The first one is to find out what keywords people are actually searching for. Makes sense, right? You wanna find out what the terms and phrases are that people are typing into Google. So one way that you can do this is to use the auto suggestion tool that Google has on their search bar. So if you type in, for example, extra large dog bed into Google, you will see a whole list of auto suggested keywords related to the keyword you already entered. These are keyword ideas. These are great for getting the ball rolling and thinking about how your customer thinks about this product. These are actual searches being made on Google. People typed this in when they wanted to search for something related to extra large dog bed. So this is a great starting point. Uh, most of the time, these keywords are gonna be competitive. We'll talk about that in a minute. So this is why keyword research is so important because we're gonna figure out which of these keywords to use on our product. You can also use the keyword suggestion tool on I do lab, we have a tool on there so you can type in a keyword and see what we suggest that you use. This mimics Google, so you don't have to go to Google, you can just stay within our app and optimize your product there by looking at the keywords that we suggest. Now you could just stop there. You could use the keywords that are found on Google and this would be a better product title than what you may have had. And the reason for this is because now your product title actually contains a keyword that people are searching for. And so this might be better than, for example, if I had a blue dress that I named, you know, ozone beauty dream or something poetic like that. Now I have a keyword in there that is, you know, blue cocktail party dress. Well, that's better because now Google understands that I'm actually selling a blue cocktail dress instead of some poetic name for a product that they're not gonna understand. They're just a robot. So you wanna make it as easy as possible for Google to understand what you are selling and you can do this with your product title and keywords. All right, so the second step is to see how much traffic your keyword has. Now, traffic means search volume. So how many people are searching for this term per month? Is it one, is it 100,000? Makes a big difference, right? You want to target a keyword that has a high search volume. 
You don't want to waste your time with a keyword that no one's searching for because that'll bring you zero traffic. You want to spend your time looking for a keyword that has a decent amount of people actually searching for it, typing it into Google. So one way that you can do this on a very preliminary basis is you can use Google Trends. This is a free tool that Google offers and you can just type in some of the keyword ideas that you're thinking about using and then see what Google says. You know, this is based on trends of how many people are searching for this term. And so you can see if it flatlines, that means no one's searching for it. If it has a high hockey puck type of uh, curvature, then people are definitely looking for it. But this is just kind of to get the ball rolling. Now, how do you get that concrete information of how many people are actually searching for this term? For that, I would use a free tool called Google AdWords. They have a keyword planner. This is one option that you can use. And so you can type in the keywords that you want to research, and then you can see what information pulls up for these keywords. So you can see the competition and the search volume. So the search volume will look something like if there's just a dash that means there's no search volume. Sometimes you'll see zero to 10. That means zero to 10 people are searching for this keyword per month. Not so great, I would avoid that. And then sometimes you'll see something like, you know, 1,000 to 10,000 people are searching for this keyword per month. That's great, go after that. You know, 10,000 to 100,000 people are searching for this term. Even better, a very highly searched after keyword. That's great. But sometimes you see something that's kind of on the lower end of the spectrum that people ignore. And this would be 10 to 100 people search for this keyword. Now, oftentimes I tell my clients and customers, definitely go after these keywords. They're low hanging fruit. Basically, this is saying up to 100 people are searching for this keyword on Google every month and no one is really giving them the information or goods or services that they're looking for. So this is your chance to use this keyword and it's easier to rank for, more achievable because it's most often or not, they're low competition. So this is a great way to go after low hanging fruit. So Definitely when it comes to keywords, you want to go after something that's high on searches and low competition, but it's okay if the search volume is kind of, you know, not the highest. It's like a hundred people searching for this term. That's okay for websites just starting out. Uh, this is low hanging fruit and if you rank for it, this is a great way to get your foot in the door and start ranking for terms on Google and building up your domain authority, showing Google that you can rank for terms and that people are visiting your website. So this is a great thing to do. So again, search volume or traffic is how many people are searching for this term. So you want to definitely look out for those keyword gems. So those are keywords that have a high search volume. Obviously that would be the best case scenario, right? It has a high search volume, you know, 1,000 or 10,000 or 100,000 searches per month, but low competition, amazing. This means it's more achievable to rank for and a lot of people are searching for it. So it's a gem, definitely go after that. Which leads me to competition, which is a word that I've been using and we're gonna dive into that and see what it means. So competition is what is the competition for this keyword? How many people are fighting over this keyword? You know, how many people are trying to rank for the same keyword? Now there are over a billion websites out there, something to consider, and your website is just one of them. So any keyword that you're trying to rank for, you know, most likely someone else out there or, you know, thousands or even millions of other people are trying to rank for that same keyword, especially if it's broad, you know, something that's very general, like women's shoes or men's clothing. Well, you're going to be up against millions of people, you know, trying to rank for that term. So when it comes to competition, you want to look at this when doing keyword research. What is your competition? Is it low, medium, or high? High competition are keywords that are very hard to rank for. Uh, they are sometimes nearly impossible. And I say nearly because everything's possible with the right amount of effort and work and marketing campaigns. Uh, so definitely just something to consider, you know, if you have a lot of highly competitive terms that you're targeting on your website, this might be a reason why you're having, you know, no, traffic to your website because you're not ranking for those terms. You're up against Amazon and Best Buy and um, 
you know, Macy's for the same terms. So Google's gonna show those websites uh, instead of yours if, if those websites have a higher SEO, you know, than your website. So highly competitive terms I would avoid. And they're okay on your homepage. Uh, that's a whole nother video, you know, to target highly competitive uh, <laughs> keywords on your homepage. You can definitely check out our other video on your brand name if you're interested in that. But most often I just say go after low competition to medium competition keywords for the rest of your website on products, especially if you're just a website starting out because these are more achievable to rank for. You're up against less competition, so definitely a better deal. So I said we should look for keywords that are low competition, low to medium competition, but how are high on searches? How do you do this? Now you can use our tool at DoLab where we have a keyword research tool and you can check that out. So you can use a free keyword tool like Google's Keyword Planner and you can look at the data here. So if I typed in extra large dog bed, I would see that this is high competition and I might be, you know, kind of hesitant to use that on my product because I know how hard it is to rank for as a new website. But then you can sort by competition on here. And then all of a sudden, all the low competition keywords show up at the top. And of course, not all of these are gonna be relevant or sound natural enough to use in your product title. So you're gonna have to sort through them and look for that diamond in the rough. You're gonna have to look for that gem keyword that is relevant to your product and that you can use that has natural language and describes your product accurately. You don't want to ever mislead uh, or trick customers to your website because that's not gonna do you any good. They're not gonna buy the product. They're gonna hit the back button. So this is just a bad path to go down. But let's say you do find the low competition keyword. For example, black and gray dog bed has low competition but enough people are searching for it, I might use that in my product title because it accurately describes my you know, extra large dog bed that I'm selling. And so this is a great way to start using low competition keywords in my uh, product pages on my product titles. So how do you use these keywords in your product titles? So I always recommend putting the keyword of your choice in the beginning of the product title. This is uh, better because it carries more weight and Google sees this as it having more importance. And then the rest of your product title can just come after that. So your keyword doesn't have to be the entire product title. So if my keyword is, for example, black and gray dog bed, that could be my product title if I want it to be. I don't have to put anything else, but if I wanted, I could make it, you know, black and gray dog bed, dash, extra large, you know, cotton 100%, something like that, or made in the USA. And as long as my product title contains the, key, the keyword, then I'm good. And that's how you have a keyword in your product title. Let's talk a little bit about what keywords to look for in general. So the general rule of thumb is to be specific and not broad. So a broad keyword would be like, for example, shoes. It's very broad. What kind of shoes are you selling? Are they for women or men or even dogs? I don't know. So this is a very broad keyword. Usually single word keywords are very broad and hard to rank for. They're highly competitive and you're going to be up against big box retailers such as Macy's and Zappos and Amazon. So definitely uh, broad terms I would stay away from and lean more towards specific keywords. So specific keywords, they're also known as long tail keywords. These are keywords that have three to six words in them, generally speaking. So they're like a long keyword. That's why they're called long tail keywords. And these are great because they're specific. And generally speaking, if someone's looking for something really specific on Google and you're targeting that specific keyword, well, this is great because that person knows what they want. They already know the type of product that they want to buy and they're searching for it. So if you rank for that keyword and you get matched up with that person searching for that keyword, that's amazing because you're gonna have a higher likelihood of getting that person on your site, clicking through and possibly purchasing the item they were looking for. 
An example of a specific keyword would be black and white high heel shoes. Now, this is a great keyword. It's a, an example of a long tail keyword because it's many words within the keyword. Now, this is really great because we know that it's shoes for women, they're high heels, so we know the style, and we even know the color, black and white. This is a low competition keyword that gets up to 100 searches per month. And if I rank for this keyword, I can potentially get up to 100 people on my website, new visitors, organic traffic. So this is an example of some low hanging fruit, uh, an example of how you can target these low competition keywords to get people on your website without spending money on advertisements. Okay, so we talked about the keywords that you would want to try and rank for and the general rule of thumb there about being specific and not broad. Now we can talk a little bit about how to use these keywords on your actual product page. The first thing that you're gonna to want to do is use this keyword on your product title. So it will be in the beginning of your product title. That's the best way to do it because it shows Google that it has a lot of weight and it's the most important term in that whole product title phrase. It doesn't have to be the whole product title. So if your keyword, for example, is black and white high heel shoes, you can add some more words at the end of this string like black and white high heel shoes, dash, you know, for women or dash, you know, formal uh, nightwear or something like that, that would be fine. Uh, as long as your keyword is in your product title, then you're good to go. Also, another place to put your keyword is in your product description. I would put it one to two times in there and that's a great way to just sprinkle it and show Google this is the keyword I want to rank for. Another great place to put your keyword is in your meta description and page title. These are how you appear on Google search results. So Google search results, you'll see a headline, like a clickable link, that's your page title. So put your keyword in there one time and then the description that's below the headline, that is your meta description. So go ahead and put your keyword in there one time as well. And lastly, you want to include your keyword in your image alt text one time I would say would be good. Uh, so definitely do that as well. And you don't wanna overdo it on your image alt text because then you know that can look a little spammy to Google. So just try and be uh, a little bit minimal when it comes to using these keywords so you're not overloading the product page with them because that can be also known as keyword stuffing, which is not good. All right guys, I hope that was a great little tutorial for you on how to use keywords and how to find keywords for your product page. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. And also, if you haven't done so already, subscribe down below. We have a link to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any other SEO videos. And my question to you is, do you do keyword research? Go ahead and put a comment down below, yes or no, and I reply and read to all comments. So if you'd like to see the full tutorial for this video, how to research keywords, uh, you can head on over to addulab.com where we have lots of resources and a whole guide on this topic. I'll put a link down below as well. All right guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next SEO video.